Hi everybody, it's Lonnie Bowling again, um, continuing with my series on using the Pi System SDKs. And uh, today we are going to, uh, or this part, we're going to talk about uh, getting values for, uh, for displaying uh, data, maybe in a graph or something like that. So, you know, uh, one of the really common uh, requirements when you're, when you're working with Pi Data is you need to get a hold of that historical information and somehow you need to, uh, you know, you need to display that information maybe in a trend or maybe on a, uh, some kind of a grid or something like that. Uh, the Pi data, you know, is not necessarily stored internally that way, but we really would like just a simple way to get that data out uh, without having to go to, to too much effort. So luckily the SDK has given us a really nice uh, method just for getting values that are specifically intended to be displayed on a plot. Um, so in this, in this uh, part four of this series, we're going to look at uh, the a method called plot values, which is also going to be part of that pi point class that we we're working with in our last uh, last video. Um, and in that, we're going to have to deal with some time elements because we're going to be looking back in the historical uh, archives for uh, over a period to get some data over a specific range. And um, so we'll talk about that, and then I'll go through an example of how we're exactly how how we're going to retrieve this plot data, and we'll take a look at that. So this is going to be uh, Pretty straightforward. Hopefully, you'll see after it's done that uh, you know this is great. There's not a whole lot uh, to it. So, what I want to do uh, first is uh, go back to our trusty documentation and take a look at well, okay, what's what are what's available um, for me to do this? And um, looking under the Pi Points class here, once again, uh, where we can look at our methods and our properties and those types of things. Now, this is probably going to be a method. And uh, here you see it's uh, plot values um, is the one that I am specifically interested in. There are some other ones for uh, like interpolated values and getting values at times by count, uh, uh, you know, recorded values and things like that. There's a lot of ways that you can get values from Pi. Uh, this is one way. And probably, I would say, the most likely way, depending on what you need to do, but if you just want to display some data for a trend, this is the one you want to use. Okay, so clicking on plot, plot values, um, we can take a look at what do we need to do to get this set up in our, um, in our program. And uh, remember how I told you at the beginning of the series that uh, we're going to be looking at the documentation quite a bit? Uh, that's that's the approach that I take when I'm working with the SDK is that I do go to the documentation I do read it over and I kind of see what's in here and what are the things that are available for me it's not always obvious how to put these things together like you know we're over on plot values but before we get the plot values we had to get a pi point we had to get a server we had to use servers so we had to use a bunch of classes so this isn't necessarily going to tell me all of that but as I'm building on things, hopefully you'll see how this can stack together. So looking at the, uh, the plot values, we can see that we need to, uh, we have our method here, and we need to send it this time range, an AF time range, and we need to send it this thing, uh, an integer called intervals, and then this is going to return AF values. Now we talked about an AF value, the single, a single value in our last uh, video, this is values, which is probably, my guess, is just a collection of value, uh, pi value, AF value. So, um, so let's go ahead and scroll down here and take a look at uh, what, what, uh, what it's telling us and see if this is uh, matching up to what our, our best guess is. So here it says the time range, the bounding time range for the plot values request. Uh, and... Uh, that, that makes sense, right? Uh, so we're going to have to get this uh, time range set up somehow. Intervals, the number of intervals to plot over. Typically, this would be the horizontal number of pixels in a trend. Fair enough. If we have 100 pixels uh, that we're going to display uh, some kind of a, a trend on, then we would probably want to set the intervals at 100 to get a good, uh, a good representation of that data. Return value returns AF values, a collection with values that will produce the most accurate plot over over the time range while minimizing the amount of data returned. 
that's perfect. We don't want to bring in too much data because, you know, this could be, you know, we could be displaying, uh, I don't know, uh, data on any kind of device. So, you know, we want to be sensitive about how much information we're going to pull over. And uh, remarks, it says, uh, for each interval, the data available is examined and significant values are returned. Each interval can produce up to five values. That's kind of interesting. I wouldn't have expected that. Okay, if they're unique. So five values if they're unique. The value at the beginning of the interval, the value at the end of the interval, the highest value, the lowest value, and at most one exceptional point, a bad status or, or digital state. So we can get a bunch of information there that we can figure out how we want to display that to the user. Okay, now it says there's a note that we have a 150,000 point limit um, for the maximum data that's going to be returned. And that can be edited uh, by changing the server's pi timeout table and adding or editing a value associated with a parameter arc max collect. So that's good to know, right? If you're if you uh, if you're in a situation where you might uh, be expecting to pull in more data, then you want to uh, note that. Okay. So that is uh, that's the summary of the plot values. I think that's I think we can do this. Uh, but the one thing I don't quite get is uh, this uh, AF time range. So let's let's explore that. I'm going to click over here, and it says this structure represents a, a time range which is de defined by a start and end time. Okay, that that's that makes sense if we're looking for a uh, if we're looking for um, a plot, we need to have a start and end time. So that that makes sense that we're sending in some kind of a range. Uh, remarks: A range can be used as a con context when getting values. Um, so we can use a range in, in different places here. Uh, we can look at the examples. I'm going to look at the C-sharp example here really, real quickly. We can see that uh, they set up this uh, time range, and they set in, uh, they use this AF time, and they uh, created, uh, looks like something that goes back one hour, and then they used AF time dot now. Um, and, you know, that's, that's one way it looks like we can create a, a time range by just uh, creating an instance of it, setting the start and end time. But maybe there's a, Maybe there's other ways. So let's go ahead and look at the time range uh, members up here and see what, uh, what, what we could do. Uh, one of the things I like to do to keep my code simple is uh, I like to, I'm, I'm really interested in what constructors can offer. And here you can see we can create a time range and we can pass it two strings. And it creates a new time range object with the specified strings representing a start and end time. That's kind of nice. And then we could also do, uh, we could create a new time range with the AF time. And we could uh, create a new AF time range uh, by, by passing those in. And then we have another one where we could use this format provider. Let's take a look at this guy. Uh, we could pass in the start time and end time directly into here as strings. And uh, it says here um, that, okay, the start time and the end time, it looks like a starting time it can be a timer represented by this object specified in a string uh, format, strings are interpreted as local times unless they also contain a time zone indicator, such as a Z or a GMT. Pi time formats, a star, a T, a minus, uh, star minus one H, etc., are also supported. Now that's pretty cool. Um, I think that I'd want to maybe take advantage of that. So you know that uh, that when you're when you're looking at uh, data in Pi, you know we uh, in process book and stuff like that, we use these asterisks a lot. And we can go back and we can search time. So, like, if I went over to my SMT um, and I looked at uh, the um, archive editor here, and I looked at CDT 158, and I could go back here and I could do minus uh, four hours. And um, let me reconnect you here. And let me see CDT 158. Let's see if we can get four hours back. So here's data over the last four hours, right? So we're we're familiar with how this works. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and use that one because I, I kind of like that one. It's nice, uh, quick and easy, good for a video like this. Um, and you know, um, you know, let's give it a shot. So that's kind of uh, diving into uh, AF time a little bit, um, which is something that we needed to get involved with this for this plot value. So let's uh, switch back, and here's where we we got our snapshot value, and uh, that's nice. Um, and we could say pi point, uh, let's say current value is that. And then now let's come back here. We already have our pi point. 
So we want to do, we want to get a collection of AF values. So we're going to do a var, and then we're just going to do, um, let's call this uh, plot values. And let's say we want to use that point, CDT158, and then we should have this plot values. And in here, we want to, uh, we need to, we need to have this uh, AF time range. So we know we have that constructor. So I'm going to go new AF. Uh, new uh, AF time range and here we can see that it's taking the full uh, namespace uh, path to AF time range. I really don't want to do that. So one of the things to get rid of this if you end up having that happen and you just want to have it like that you can always right click on this and do a resolve and get it up here in your using statement or you can just come up to your using statement and you can also uh, type it in manually like that. So either way, same thing will happen and that gets it to the new AF time range. Now we have uh, that constructor uh, so when we create this time range we can send it the, uh, the um, string start time and end time and we can use these uh, this, uh, this wild card. So the start time would be something like uh, you know, we'd want to go back to maybe like uh, minus one hour, or I mean now minus uh, one hour, something like that. And then, um, and then of course we want to do up to the current. We could just do current um, to now. And uh, uh, new time range. Let's get one more uh, parenthesis there, and that should be it. Let's make sure we compile and. Uh, we're missing one more item. We're missing our intervals, of course. So the intervals was, uh, you know, how many horizontal pixels are we going to have in our display? Well, I don't want to get that much data. So let's just do something easy like 10 and see how much data comes back and see what, what we look like, what it looks like. So now I want to, um, I want to just, uh, I want to, uh, let's just list out the data in the console, see what we get. Okay, so let's go uh, values. Uh, whoops. Uh, for each, I want to do. I want to um, iterate through that, and then let's call this a value uh, in um, plot values, uh, and we can just do a console right right line, and uh, we can say uh, value. Say, let's just do, uh, yeah, let's do, let's just, uh, let's just plot them out with the timestamp. Um, I don't think we need to put anything in front of it. Okay, so we can see that, uh, and then we want to take our value. Now, a value is a type AF value, the single, a single value. So this is exactly what we did up above, where we just do our, um, and uh, what I'm going to have, I'm going to have a problem here because I have this defined up here already. So let's call this um, a p value. Uh, that's going to give me a problem. So we'll do, um, and let's use camel casing here to get our. Sorry, it's hard. Uh, I program all the time, so I got to got to do it a certain way. Anyway, uh, so we go p value, and um, we want to uh, look at our value, and we want to do the two string just to see what it is and then we'll um, we also let's go ahead and um, and and type in our uh, let's get our uh, our timestamp and uh, we'll do the same thing to string and I think that should be about it and let's go ahead and run this and see what we get okay cool looks like we we um, we were successful here we've got our current value and then we can see, uh, and we're going back one hour, right? So from 10.10 to 9.10. So here we can see we have, uh, we have these uh, values. And it looks like you can see that, uh, you know, they're not necessarily evenly spaced. Um, you know, there's, there's different um, amounts of time, four minutes, four minutes, five minutes, uh, here it looks like we have six, seven, eight, nine, ten minutes. 
So there's a lot of different, there's, there's, there's different uh, intervals between each one of these points. And, uh, and then we even have this no data down here at 1010. Uh, uh, 08. So, so we we have uh, we have values, and then we even have something that's that's showing uh, that we don't have anything. So, this, if we were to plot that out on a trend, this would be a pretty accurate representation of what actually happened to that point over that period of time. It would it would describe it uh, in the ups and downs, in the bottoms and the peaks. And the Pi system is being smart. This 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 function is being very smart about how it returns those values. And this is just over one hour, very coarse look. So there, of course, could be things in between there that we would miss. But that's why we would want to um, probably make the interval higher. You know, like a hundred or two hundred if you're doing a hundred a hundred uh, pixels or a two hundred pixel wide trend. Uh, so um, that's pretty much it. That's what I wanted to show you how we could get some uh, plot values coming. I think these. Uh, the things I'm knocking out here on these videos are really the, you know, the the most common things that you're going to want to do. You're going to want to get in there. You're going to want to access this data. Uh, you want to get pi points. Uh, you're going to want to get pi values, and then you want to get plot values. And then there's a whole bunch of stuff that we can explore when it comes to the intervals, and how intervals work, and how you could, you know, get the exact type of data you want. But but I would, um, my experience is I use this one a lot. This is. And, and the way that they've laid it out, OSIsoft has laid it out, they've made it really easy to use. So um, give it a try. Hopefully you're um, seeing that none of this is, is too difficult, and I'm putting the pieces together here that will make it easy for you to get started. Uh, I'm Lonnie Bowling, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.